You were only on four episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race. How, how did you become so popular just off of those four episodes? It really is just as soon as the cameras go on, get your screen time. All right, let's get back to how you supplemented your income. I started doing sex work because I had a friend that did sex work. Is sex work a nicer way to say prostitution? I mean, you could say prostitution. I think it's more of a fun word. Tasha. Tasha Show. Tasha Show from Show. Welcome to Tasha Show. It's Valentine's Day Eve. I hope everybody's all horned up, ready for the big day tomorrow. Make sure you store it up. Don't release today. Just keep it all pent up until tomorrow. Then hit your loved one with all of your goodness. (laughs) I've got no plans for Valentine's Day. How about you, Eddie? Nope, nothing. What are you watching lately? Watching, uh, we're watching Beef on Netflix. I'm already irritated. I'm watching Beef on Netflix. Everybody has to say, like, I I find it so annoying. What you watching? And then they they say what they're watching and then what platform it's on. I don't know why that bugs me. Everybody's, and then they all, that one seems to be very popular, but people always try to say something you've never even heard of. There's too many platforms. Epics? You watch anything on Epics? Name one show that comes out on Epics. No, you, uh, hold on, Eddie. You, you name one person who's watched a show on Epics, and I'll interview him on this podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm watching Diarrhea of a Handyman on Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I never heard of that. No, no, Diarrhea of a Handyman. It's good. It's on season two on Roomba. The, the vacuum? Yeah, yeah, you know, they're, they're producing content now. You should check it out. You know, I watch uh, I watch that Lupin, that that f- French heist show. It, it combines two things that I find uh, irritating: magicians and the French language. And this guy is always he's got disguises, and nobody ever recognizes him. Not even his wife and kids. You know, he puts on the crazy makeup, and he, he becomes a different person. Meanwhile, you know, they, they they play to the he's a black gentleman, and they play to the joke like, oh, oh all black people look alike. Uh, they've made that reference to that before, that racist uh, stereotype. This guy doesn't look like anyone you've ever seen ever. <laughs> he has the most unique face. His body is huge. He hunches forward. So. Anytime he's in disguise and then just walking around the city as the biggest, you know, art thief in the history of the world, it's like, well, it's that fucking dude right there. Oh, yeah, now he has gray eyebrows on, but it's still the same guy. It's like when SNL, you know, they have they always have like a, a 20-something-year-old cast, and then when they dress up like old people, you're just like, well, that's just a fucking, that's just one of the kids dressed up like an old person. I'm just, I'm just, I feel like Lupine should have been arrested. Anyway, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Yet I watch it mainly to work on my French. Uh, let me tell you another thing that I watch. I, I know, I know this isn't uh, a, a recent release, but I just watched it. And I only have one thing that I want to talk about. The little mini series hijack on Apple. I, I w- only had one problem with it. And it's, it's at the beginning when they kind of, they've got some dirt on the pilot to get him to open the emergency door for the whole thing to take place. He's, he's got to flip a switch to open, open this door, but the co-pilot, a woman is not going to let him. So, and he's like, no, no, I'm going to. And she's like, I'm not going to let you. So he takes like a metal thermos and just beats the shit out of her. This is my only problem with the whole show, which none of it is plausible, but this is why not, instead of just beating the shit out of her so that you can flip this switch above your head, you just take one arm and hold her arms and flip the switch. <laughs> <laughs> that was my issue with that. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, we've got a new segment uh, on the show. You ready for this? It's called Hello from Toss Show. This is where I uh, say hi to one of our subscribers. Okay, who do we got here? Dr. Jocelyn in Charlotte, North Carolina. I know you're listening. 
I'm told you uh, drop off your daughter at preschool and then listen to us on your way home. Well, we're, we're happy to have you as a subscriber. Also, we've got Bertha in Manitoba. Oh, she's old as fuck. Um, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> she's missing a finger. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that, Bertha. I hope it wasn't an important finger. I'm going to say hi to Stephanie in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. She's a stay-at-home single mother of two. Well, that's confusing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's not confusing to be a single mother, but to stay at home and single, that's a, quite a drain. <laughs> yeah, it's a luxury you get to stay at home and be single. And so usually it's one or the other. You don't get both. Yeah, whatever. Let's get to it. Uh, today's guest, oh, uh, was on another great TV show, Eddie, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. You watch that show? That is still in the queue. <laughs> still in the queue? Still in the queue. You got to move that up. Enjoy. Okay, if you're anything like me and my guest today, you've made a career out of dressing up like a woman. Please welcome the beautiful queen herself, Rock. Oh my God, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. My first question that I ask all my guests, mm -hmm. do you believe in ghosts? I absolutely believe in ghosts. Okay, so I don't know how much background checking you did, but uh, I- Not much. Okay, good. I used to live in San Francisco and I lived in an artist commune with 23 other people. Uh -huh. And it was located in an old converted nunnery. So where nuns lived, where they ate, they drank, they probably died. Um, Masturbated? Most likely, yeah. Uh, there were odd stains everywhere. God, that's everywhere. a hot thought. You think they do? Uh, absolutely. Really? Yeah, I think so. I, I bet they don't. I don't think they do it with their hands. I'm sure they just like sit on a really rigid chair or something. like And just grind it just to Just grind a it pole. on the side. Yeah. That's <laughs> more holy. That's more right, of a so Christian anyway, thing. Tell me, so that all these nun spirits were in your building. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> I used to have a room that was next to the old chapel, um, which was like really small, really cold San Francisco. No one believes in central mm -hmm. heating or anything like that. One night I was alone okay. in the space and books started flying off the shelf straight at me straight at me I swear to God and one of them happened to be a Bible I mean if that doesn't if that doesn't scare you straight nothing will <laughs> where are you from I'm from Santa Clara so uh -huh. like the Silicon Valley Can I, I know you're not supposed to ask a woman her age but what, what, what am I looking at right now what do you think oh 32. That's exactly, I'm about to turn 32 in like a month. <laughs> right, right on the head. Seriously. Uh, okay. What about me reads 32? I don't know. Just the, the experience <laughs> of Northern California. Yeah, that sounds about right. Did you say hella growing up? I absolutely said hella growing up. Uh, oh my God. Rock. Am I supposed to only call you Rock? You can call me, uh, so my full name is Rock M. Sakura. You can okay. call me Rock. You can call me Sakura. You can call me Rock M. You could say anything. People call me Shakira because they can't pronounce Sakura. Oh, that's fine. Shakira's okay. rich. And you are in. And your uh, your ethnic Four. background is is Filipino. Is that? Oh, Filipino, Vietnamese. I just did a twenty three and Me recently. Did it work? Um, yeah, it came back and it had results. Okay. Um, and I had gonorrhea, so it <sighs> was like, yeah, it's okay. It happens. I of course it does, but they they shouldn't tell you that way. Well, I mean, it was like. 30% Swedish and 70% gonorrhea. gonorrhea. Yeah. Fair enough. I did one of those before. I just wanted to, I was I was just hoping that I was something more interesting than I am. What, what, what was the it's conclusion? Just, it's like fucking white. Like it, just a white. Did it come back and it was just a middle finger just straight like in your you face? Just like you elitist prick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just, Steve Jobs? Why is, uh, what the fuck does this mean? You are gay? Um, ish. Interesting. <laughs> Let's talk about your childhood for a moment up in Northern California. What was your childhood like? I grew up in kind of like a mobile home park. So mo most people would call it a trailer park. Yeah, that's what I'd call it. But uh, <laughs> I was really heavy into video games. Were you? Okay. Yeah. But I was really heavy into Nintendo mm -hmm. and like Mario Kart. Oh, so um, fun. Uh, funny enough, like it translated into like my adult life. Like when I was like maybe 19, I was playing Mario Kart like competitively. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, like for okay. That's very interesting though mm -hmm. that you went into a professional video game playing. 
Well, it's also too like the video games also permeate into all of the drag and stuff too. How 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 uh, early on did you say I, I like dressing up? I started to like dressing up when I was like 24 and I stopped liking it like maybe two years ago when I started doing it for a career. Ah, uh, you know, I, a, a, f- a friend of mine had a quote and, and I always loved it. He goes, I'm lucky enough uh, to, to get to do something I once loved. <laughs> I mean, truly, if you guys want to go out there and get your passion, like do the thing that you love, wait for it to die in front of you, in mm. front of your very eyes. When did you come out of the closet? Well, I was kind of like outed by my Rena Center computer at the time because, okay, so here's well, what it is. You got to delete your history. I didn't know you had to delete the history, okay? I was like, I was like 12 or something. Uh-huh. We just, computers just came into the game for and you, everybody. The, and the whole internet was created for porn. Yes. Well, okay, so I didn't know how to look up gay men, okay? Mm-hmm. When you're a kid, this is what you do. You're like, okay. I want to see gay people, gay.com. Uh-huh. I want to see men's asses, men's butts.com. So that was the search history Man. that my mom found in the computer. Who's sitting on those website domain names? Eddie, is that yeah, you? Yeah, who's got mensbutts.com? Mensbutts.com. You had to get in early to get that website. Mm-hmm. By the way, what do you think of straights uh, uh, doing drag? Oh, I hate them. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you just meant straight people. Fair enough. Do you okay. hate straight people? No, I don't hate straight people. Well, what about people that that that, that, all, that are straight, but they feel like they can only hang out with gay people? Do you find them a little fishy? Yeah, I do. I mean, like a lot of straight men that hang out with gay men, they're they're fishing for something. Okay. They're fishing for compliments or uh, you know, like there's a lot of straight men that get validation from gay men or okay. they're like teasing gay men. Something about it. Uh, how'd you pick your drag name? So my name actually comes from, like, I was raised by TV rather Mm -hmm. than actual people. And the thing that I related to most was anime. So my name comes from, like, a a main character from an anime series from Cardcaptor Sakura. And the Rock M Sakura part is a pun off of Rock M Sock M Robots because when I first started doing drag, I was doing a lot of weightlifting, and my arms were a lot bigger than this. Uh And so whenever I would look at myself in a picture, it would be so jarring just how big my shoulders and arms were. I mean, if you oiled up right now and started flexing, you would, I can tell that you're in amazing shape. Bring out the oil. Okay, let's go. Now, actually, anime, was, wasn't that your first experience in, in dressing and drag was going to oh, yeah. an anime convention? So I, I went to an anime convention and I cosplayed as a character from Street Fighter named Poison and essentially the outfit. But you only picked the girl because the girls were interesting. Look, the thing is like male characters to me, like a lot of male characters just don't have the, I just can't relate to them. Um, there's a type of like depth to a lot of female characters that I really appreciate more, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, also to boobies are fun <laughs> when you wear them. A little uncomfortable at times. I mean, they can be if they're really sweaty. Yeah. I dressed as in drag uh, almost my entire career. But the original reason that I started is is ridiculous. And most people don't know this story. I was in a relationship with a, a girl. And she uh, was very, very jealous. To where it was just like a thing. Where it's like, oh, this is going to be a deal breaker at some point in this relationship. But right now you're too good looking. I'm going to stay with you. <laughs> So I would uh, dress as a female so that I wouldn't have to cast a female to to play the part. Then I would go home and she'd be like, oh, you know, I could, she, there'd just be rage of her jealous of who I worked with that day. That was why I dressed as a woman, just so that I didn't have to get yelled at when I went home. It's kind of a similar situation to like Shakespearean, except like they it just is. didn't like women. Yeah, well, that's, I guess yeah, that was that's, the main thing, that's way guess. different. That's the main difference. All right. You good at walking in heels? Oh, no. So what I like to do is I'll step out, and then I can't walk in them, so I'll just get on the floor. Are you good in heels? No. No? No, but I, I mean, I could pull it off better than most straight guys can. Would you Would Would you say that your strut you? is sexy? No. I am an eight and a half in women's. Oh, wow. You got tiny feet. I know. They were bound as a child. Oh. Yeah, lotus foot. I've heard about that. Mm -hmm. They thought that the practice was done, but retro. Mm -hmm. Do you wish you had gay influencers on social media to look up to when you were growing up? 
I hate gay influencers now. Oh, I hate them so much. Okay. So absolutely not. Okay. No. I would love— Would you consider yourself one? Oh, yeah. Okay. I hate myself so much. <laughs> you have no idea how much just like I loathe myself. That's not true. Completely. Not completely. Who is your idol? My idol is uh, so I read a lot of manga. Uh, do you do you read manga or watch I anime do. a lot? Yes. Okay, so One Piece, which is getting a live action adaptation soon, the creator Ichiro Oda um, is my idol. He works so hard um, just to create something that he really loves and really cares about, and he's goofy. He just like whenever he creates something, it's just because he likes. He likes to do it. Like, it's just the story he wants to tell. And I really admire him for that. Is there a difference between cross-dressing and drag? I would say cross-dressing is more for, like, straight people and, like, doing it for, like, self-sexual gratification. Mm -hmm. I would say cross-dressing is more of that for me. And drag is more of an art form. Mm -hmm. um, drag, definitely, you can make a career off of it. I'm not sure how much cross-dressing. Let's talk about the, the, the financials of your career. When you were living in San Francisco with, I don't know how many people in the- 23. 23 people. You were doing drag then. Was that paying the bills at all or Absolutely no? not. Okay. How do you make money in drag? Here's how you make money in drag, okay? This is a, a crash course for you people that are watching. You put on a wig, mm -hmm. you put on a dress, put on shoes. Doesn't matter if you can walk in them, okay? One, two, three. Put on at least a little bit of makeup, like maybe like a pinky's worth, some eyeshadow. And if you go out into a bar and you just lip sync a little bit to a song that you maybe know, okay. you can make two or three dollars and then maybe backflip. And that's it. That's that's the basis of drag. Makeup, wig, shoes, backflip, song. Uh-huh. So, and no money. And no money, yeah. So so basically, for a lot of drag queens, we do drag for like gender expression. Mm -hmm. And we happen to get money at the same time because we perform as well. When I was in San Francisco, I could definitely not pay my bills um, with drag. Before I did drag, I was doing, I was working in fast food full time for like 10 years. Oh, that's too long. Oh, yeah, absolutely too long. I'm surprised I'm still around, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I worked at a Jamba Juice. I would have thrown myself in a blender. If do you I consider Jamba Juice fast food? Well, yeah, it's fast food. Oh, you know you do. Yeah, I think it's fast food if you go to the right Jamba Juice, but everywhere they take like fucking 10 minutes. I'm to make not your talking drinks. about the speed of it. I just meant like I, when I think of fast food, I think of McDonald's and the, and the stuff like that, the burgers that are not. I don't think well, it's Jamba not good juice. for you. But Jamba Juice isn't good for you. Too, the calories. It's too, all sugar. It's too much sugar. All yeah. Right. Now, come on, get me back on track. Oh, so, okay. Your career path, you're in San Francisco, you're not making money, but before that, you were, you were not making food. money in fast food. That was awful. All right, yeah. let's get to it. Quit my job. I moved to San Francisco so I could do drag full time. I It was like my aspiration. I thought I could do drag full time and pay for all the bills. Uh huh. It's an expensive city. It's an expensive city. And for some reason, they only like, they pay the lowest out of any of the cities that I've been in for like a drag show fee. So like they'll pay like $35 for a show. And like here in LA, they'll pay like 100 to 125 a show, okay. um, like base. So I kind of had to supplement my income. When you lived with 23 people and the electric bill came in, did you guys split it 23 ways? Uh, I had it fixed. Okay. So okay. Right. the one person I guess took care of the electricity. Okay. I guess it was like the landlord or something okay. like that. Um, whatever. All right, uh, let's get back to how you supplemented your income. I started doing sex work because I had a friend that did sex work. Is sex work a nicer way to say prostitution? I mean, you could say prostitution. I think it's more of a fun word if I, you say it like that. Okay. Prostitution. Well, you like, you like, prost yeah, prefer prostitution. I like it. Okay. Say prostitute. Prostitute. Hooker. Hooker. Whore. Whore. Can't be a whore. Whores Whore. don't make money. Hand job. What's that going to cost me back in the day? It depends on whether or not I use two hands. So, one hand. Oh, one hand. Oh, that's 50. 50 bucks for a nice one hander. An extra one is uh, 25. It's half off. Ah, that's nice. Uh, percentage wise, how many men uh, during the sex worker days would you say were straight? Oh, well, I mean, like, mm, I can tell you how many were married. I'm not sure how many of them were straight. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Married. Good 90%. No. Wow. I'm the other woman. That's that's a lot of straight men getting hand jobs. Yeah, well. 
How long did you actually uh, dabble in the sex work? So I did sex work for about two years. So I was on RuPaul's Drag Race. To get ready for the show, you have to get all of these outfits mm -hmm. and wigs and everything ready for the competition. They give mm -hmm. you like a list and you get everything ready. Um, and I know some of the some of the girls are mean at some of the other girls if they don't have the best wigs. Oh or, yeah, like so th that was like my nightmare if I was going to go in and they were going to like make fun of me or be like, oh, San Francisco drag is horrible and trashy. So um, we all have to pay out of our own pockets mm -hmm. to fund all of this stuff. So I was like sucking <laughs> like crazy. Oh. I was like was like left and right twenty four seven. I'd wake up, suck, <laughs> go to uh. sleep, suck. <laughs> Do you ever do you ever have to eat uh, meow to, to make ends meet? No, I haven't done that. You've never tried it. I've n oh, I've done it. I've I have. <laughs> See, this is how you know I'm gay. I got really excited because of the one time I did it. Okay, so I did eat. I did eat meow. once. Uh huh. And honestly, people ask me what it's like, and when you explain it to a gay person, it's just like it's like a sandwich you can't swallow. Oh no, that's yeah. not good. You that's... ever make out with an RB sandwich, but you can't oh, swallow it? God, you didn't have to say Arby's. God yeah. damn it. God damn it. The you didn't have to say meat -nator. it. The meatinator. The roast beef. The oh. roast beef. All right, so you have done it one time. Good yeah. for you. It was fun. I was like blowing bubbles. <laughs> they someone someone said if you do it, just uh, uh, do the, the alphabet. alphabet. On yeah, your tongue, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cute for like a, a junior in high school. But after that, you better bring some A-game stuff. <laughs> People have sex for free all the time. Yeah. And, you know, we get mad at someone uh, or judge people that that have sex for money, that are professionals. It's the only it's the only time that we look down on professionals and act like money's ruining the integrity of the game. I know it's so it's so weird uh, going from sex work to not sex work. Yeah. When I have bad sex, all I can think of is, God damn it, I wish I got paid for this. There's mm. people out there, the same people who are criticizing me, they're having bad sex and they're not getting paid for it. Okay. That is a horrible life to live. There was a guy I had a client once. Uh -huh. This is just out of nowhere. Fair enough. But he he had a uh, I think. He had his prostate removed. What? So he okay. had a prostate cancer. Uh -huh. And so he had one of those um, inflatable— bag? You know, he had an inflatable penis. Oh, an inflatable penis. Yeah. It's like one of the balls is a pump, uh -huh. and then it, like, it, it— Did Reebok make this? It kind of, yeah. <laughs> it feels like it. You, what, you, you felt it? He was a client. Oh, uh, that kind of client. So, yeah. I, I had to pump up his Reebok wiener. No way. Yeah. And then— Oh, my God. And so he— he was really convinced in telling me that he could get an orgasm. So he wouldn't just be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to. He would look at me straight in the eyes uh -huh. and scream. And I don't know why he would look at me straight in the eyes and go, oh, 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 oh. Do you know how hard it is not to laugh at someone's face? Sure. Yeah. And did anything come out? I don't think so. Maybe the, air. Do you, this guy's weird. Maybe like a giggle. You ever had one of those <laughs> orgasms where nothing comes out? Yeah, like when you're on your sixth time for the day because no. you just don't want to do anything. I've never done that. I've You've never, never done procrastination to mm. that point? No. No. Okay, I have. You, 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 I'm glad you got out of it. It was two years. Um, but No, I miss it. You do not. I do miss it. No, you don't. So I, I, I miss it some, because like the thing is I really did like doing sex work because of multiple factors. I uh, was in a monogamous relationship for a long time, so I got to explore more of my sexuality. Okay. Um, two, the clients always make you feel so, like, young and pretty. They're like, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. So it was, like, a good ego boost. And I love having sex with older men. And that was that was the norm, that it was older men? It's usually older men. Once or twice I've had, like, younger men, and they're like, I got to get rid of my virginity. You've been someone's first? I've been someone's first. Oh, that's cute. I've been a couple of people's first. And then I don't I've know, never I've, I've never been someone's first. Never? No. Nope. Not even your own. Well, no, I got my own. Whose sure. hand was the first on no, never mind. We don't like we don't we don't talk about him anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but the danger element of it, that obviously it, that doesn't feel good. I mean, sometimes you drive really fast on the highway and it feels really good. You know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah. So the, the danger is kind of nice sometimes. Like you never know where you're going to go. Did you have a pimp? No, I wish. Oh. Would you like to be my pimp? No. Come Why? on. Because I don't want you to do that. Because you don't want to wear a hat. 
No, I like hats because I I'm losing my hair and that's then you nice. Don't like canes. High, yeah. No, I don't want a cane. No grill. I don't want a cane. It's one of I those. don't want you in sex work. That's uh, that seems like it's uh that's beneath you at this point in your career. I think what it is is um I just I I literally can't go back into sex work because uh I've been on TV. If I get back into sex work, I'm gonna get people I don't know like talk about it or it's gonna become a big thing. Uh-huh. It's gonna intrude on my other career. It's going to become my career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, it seems like it would help the bottom line, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would. Did Grinder put gay sex workers out of business? Absolutely not. Okay. No, if anything, we get more work because of it. The thing is with Grinder, like other dating apps, is like you spend so much time on the app swiping and trying to find people and getting someone to come and setting up the date and everything. And then it's it's all free so people can just leave whenever they want. With doing sex work, it's like, here's the time, here's the place, have sex, we're going to have sex, Mm -hmm. and then I'm going to leave. You were only on four episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race. How how did you become so popular just off of those four episodes? It really is just as soon as the cameras go on, get your screen time. Every time the cameras would turn on, I would just like be a spark of joy. My entrance for Drag Race was... I walked out, I said my entrance line, which was all tuck and no play, make Rock'em a crazy bitch. I got onto the floor, did a full Homer Simpson whoop, 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 on the floor and jumped on all of the tables in the workroom just for fun. Sure. Do you know Alyssa Edwards? I haven't met Alyssa Edwards personally, but I know of her. She's like Drag Race royalty. I I have a good friend of mine. Is she? Uh Uh-huh. Alyssa? Uh Uh-huh. We just did a, sh- a show together. But, it, you know, let me, tell you, let me tell you something about Alyssa. Four hours minimum. To get ready? Or were you yes. waiting for her? I don't know what she's doing. Four hours minimum. She's baking a cake every time she gets ready. Four hours minimum to get her ready. How long does it take you to get ready? Today I got ready in like 30 minutes. Oh, man. that's, that's I'm the anti Alyssa Edwards. That is dream. No shade. I love everything about Alyssa. Also great, uh, great shoulders. Oh, yeah. Well, because she's a dancer. I know. But, but strong. Jesus. I like strong women. I mean, I like weak women, too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> True or false? Drag queens invented contouring. Um, ooh. It's true. Is it true? Mm-hmm. How do you... How, like, I'll look where, it up. On Google? Yeah. Yeah. Is Google always right? No. Uh, what's, what's, what's a lie uh, on Wikipedia about you? Is there anything on there that's not true that's um, written? My birthday. Ah, good for you. I always lie about my birthday so that no one knows exactly when my birthday is. I just feel like it's weird. Do you have any tattoos? I don't. Do you have a tattoo? No, I've I've got no tattoos. No tattoos? Oh. We okay. I don't would want you, tattoos. Would you get a tramp stamp? A tasteful tramp stamp for you? I would get. I would get a tramp stamp that says, "If you can read this, you'll probably get pink eye." Okay. See, there you go. That's so you would get one. Hey, there's that old uh, female. Yeah, I think she's British. Yeah. It's a drag queen. Uh, is that allowed? Are there actual? Are they allowed? Is she? I was, I was like, is a female allowed to be a drag queen? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh okay. So this is a contentious topic too. Like a lot of people think that like cis women can't do drag. Um, I don't think they should be allowed to. Like I personally think that anyone can do drag because drag is just like playing with gender, like yep. gender expression. And I think to like take women out of the like out of the equation is misogynistic yep. to me. Beat it, ladies. Yeah, get out of there. That's yeah. where I stand on. Can't, Unless can't, you can't, got a dingaling, you can't lip sync to this Beyonce think, song. I don't think straight men should do it either. Yeah, I don't think anyone should do it. I think it should just be gay men. I think gay men should have it. I think that if gay men only had it, it would be a little bit uh, boring. Mm. Yeah. Agree to disagree. Now. That you have gotten a little bit of notoriety and fame, uh, can you now make a decent living just as a drag queen? Um, yeah, actually. Okay. Well, it's a mixture of drag and social media. Mm-hmm. So it's the social media influencer that's also like the niche is drag. There's sponsorships. There's people that do like advertisements with you. There are people who will um, book you for shows in person. I just did a, a gig at a college. We did drag bingo. Oh, okay. I didn't even have to, I barely had to perform. And um, those kids' tuitions are in my pocket now. You read to, to kids? There's the drag queens oh, that no, read. Oh, no. You don't read to kids? No. I just don't like children. 
Do you? They're so sticky. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, and ugly. Sometimes. Most of the time. They go through phases, for sure. Do you want to be a mother? Um, I would love to give birth. Is that the end of the statement? <laughs> Are you working out constantly? Yeah, I do work out constantly now. I go to the gym like every other day. Uh-huh. What it, gym do you go to? I go to Gold's gym. You get a free membership to Gold's? I don't get a Gold's, free membership. Gold's, why don't you throw her a free membership? Yeah, throw me a free membership. Do her do her a solid. Do me a solid. NetJets, why don't you uh throw me some free uh free planes too, please? Yeah. You uh what what do you uh what's in your cart right now on Amazon that you need me to purchase for you? I have uh a three set of brown tights mm-hmm. and Oh God! What is the other one? What was the other one? A weighted blanket for oh, do you? for people with anxiety. Have you ever slept with a weighted blanket? Um, it's I, awful. Is it bad? I mean, to me, it feels like you forget that you have it. Then when you wake up in the middle of the night to go pee, you really you, you think there's somebody who's holding you down. It's scary. I <laughs> I want to get a weighted blanket because it's like a, it's like what those like jackets are for dogs when mm-hmm. uh, they're going through a thunderstorm. Yeah, yeah. And I just like having the weight on me. Like, it helps with anxiety. Sure. Um, You're just wanting to work out all the time. Yeah. and Even I, while you sleep. Yeah. I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> um, I also just like, I don't have to pee in the middle of the night. You don't? That's because you're you're young. You're still a young flower. No, I don't drink any water. I've got an enlarged prostate. I can tell. You cannot. I can tell. That's not something you can eyeball. The seat is down here that has and you're not, up that's, here. That has nothing to do with my prostate. I can hear it from here. You can't hear a prostate. If I touch it like this. My doctor goes in and, and he says it's getting and better. And he goes, is this thing on? No, he's never done that. But well, he does make me get in the, the baby position, lay on my side, hold my knees up to my chest, and then he goes up my butt. Wait, really? Uh-huh. Is that what a prostate... Exam is, yeah. They go up your butt and just check. Yeah, but you have to be in the fetal position? Yeah, or he does. He makes me lay in my fetal position on my side. I face out this one sad window, and I look out on Wilshire Boulevard. At least you get a window. Some I, people get I a, know. your pregnant poster. But for 20 years, I've looked out that window in fetal position and just been fingered up the butt by this guy, this old man, this old doctor. And he's like, oh, yeah, your prostate feels pretty big. And I'm like, how come none of my friends ever have to get this exam? But imagine if you did that and then you got $200. I mean, you're speaking my language. Can you explain that I want you to take this seriously? Unless, okay. Unless you don't want to. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take I it want seriously. You to take it seriously. Jesus you, Christ. Can you explain this red state controversy about banning kids from drag shows? Okay, so the whole drag queen controversy right now, basically what it boils down to is – Drag queens are being used as a way into um, taking away trans people's rights. So, like, take away human rights. Um, the thing is that every, every like, 10 years, they change the scapegoat, you know, and it just happens to be drag queens right now. Okay. We don't want kids at the drag show. They don't have any money. They're right. not going to tip. Sure. They're not going to be like, work, bitch. Are you supposed to tip during the entire show? Yeah. Okay. And, don't and touch the girls. Don't touch the girls and tip. What what kind of money am I supposed to be throwing out? Okay, it depends on whether or not you like the performance. Well, no, let's say I like the performance I, and, and I want to be respectful, and and but but what's the amount of money that I should be handing over? I would say maybe a dollar or two. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, if you really like it, you can uh-huh. give them a five. If you really, really like it, give them a 20. Mm-hmm. And if for some reason you are really, really drunk mm-hmm. and you want to let them know that you are a sugar daddy, uh-huh. 100. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, places like Arkansas, Texas, Tennessee, they're the ones passing the anti-drag laws. Mm-hmm. Is that just a refreshing excuse for you to never go there? When I quit drag, I'm going to move right there so I don't have an excuse Where would to get you, back into it. Have you ever been to the southeast of our country? Southeast. Which way is that? No. You've never been to the Bible Belt? No, like I don't like places? belts. They're uh, not flattering on me. Uh, you ever been? You ever been to Mississippi? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, Alabama? I think I would remember. You ever been to Georgia? Yeah, I've been to Atlanta. Of course, you have. Yes, I've been to Atlanta. Um, big trees, <laughs> big trees in Atlanta. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all I remember. W- w- well, it was said. wet. Okay. Are you in a relationship now? I am in a relationship. Yeah. Are you we, happy? Yeah, my partner and I um, we're very happy. That's nice. I think what it is, is as a drag queen, you have to, like, I kind of treat my drag persona as, like, my daughter. 
you kind of have to go into a relationship being like, look, I have a child mm -hmm. and you got to, they come with me, okay, if you want this relationship. So if you find someone who's on board and they can love you with that, then keep them. Okay. Don't let them go. And does he ever like prefer you to be in drag? And you're like, whoa, 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 what's this about? Um, when we first started dating, my drag was real crispy, crunchy. What does that mean? Um, it did not look good. Oh, so okay. if you tried to get an erection, it would not happen. Mm -hmm. As a gay Asian man who happens to also do drag, do you feel at all targeted in this country? Mostly by like chasers, I would say. I'd say the main target that I have right now mm -hmm. is people who really just want to have sex with drag queens. Do you perform at the same place in Los Angeles all the time? Um, it changes. Where do you like to perform here? Uh, I like to perform at Hamburger Mary's Ontario and at Precinct in downtown LA. Like, Precinct always has interesting names for their shows. They have, like, Bitchin, and it's hosted by a girl named Bitch Pudding. There's Fat Slut, and it's hosted by a Meatball. Fat Slut? Fat Slut. Right. I don't know if you guys got the Fat Slut, but it's Fat Slut. Fat Slut. Fat Slut. Hosted by? Meatball. Meatball. Yeah. It's just a fun— It's very fun. It's a great time. What percentage of your uh, of your week are you in drag? I would say maybe four to five of the seven days I'm in drag at least once. Mm -hmm. Like at least for like an hour or two. Okay. Which is— Great, like for my career, like I'm I'm constantly doing stuff and I, I need to be in drag to do this. Uh, horrible on the skin. Uh-huh. Takes years off you. Well, like imagine like wearing makeup every single, I mean, guess I guess women wear makeup every single day. But like Some, more heavy, than others. heavy, heavy makeup yeah. every single day and taking it uh, off taking is Taking it disgusting. off, scrubbing your eyes, it just hurts. It's horrible. If you want to stay pretty, don't do drag. Uh. Don't do it. It will age you, and you will hate your skin. <laughs> uh, Men'sbutts.com, available. 12 bucks. It's available. <gasps> Men's Let's butts. get it. You get it, and you can have Men'sbutts.com. We don't need Toshshow.com. Men'sbutts.com. That's the new domain. And the first thing on it, is, it will say, delete your history, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I vividly remember what was on that website for uh -huh. gay.com, too. It was like you would click it and then it would be like um, it would be an animated like animated naked man with two frames. You go. And like it was like a flaccid, very flaccid hairy wiener just, that would just bob back and forth. I vividly remember it. So if my mom went to that site, that's what she would have seen. You circumcised? I am circumcised. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. They took away my beanie. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? If I had a genie, first wish, unlimited foreskin. Really? Yeah. What a waste of your first wish. Oh, are you kidding? You can put anything in foreskin. You wouldn't need pockets ever again. Or I'm, socks. I get it. Or but a sleeping like, bag. It just seems like you find a genie. I just, I don't even know if foreskin's going to pop into my head. He's going to be just as surprised, but then he'll be like, this is the best wish hey, ever. Like this makes sense. Yeah. You ever thought about getting into politics? Oh, my God. I have been in so many politicians working in sex work. Okay. It's crazy. You don't know how many, like, in-the-closet Republicans there are and, like, Republican radio people there mm -hmm. are um, that just like to have their backs blown out by an Asian drag queen sex worker. It's so to history. answer my original question— No, I wouldn't. Okay. What's the name of that tree? Well, Bradford Pear. You know, you ever, you ever smelled a Bradford Pear when it's blooming? Is it the cum one? Yep. Yes, I have. <laughs> when I, my high school growing up had them all around. No wonder. That's what did it. I mean, that's what set it over the edge. By lunchtime, I was like salivating. I mean, you can't have semen trees all around the lunchroom. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, I always thought it was funny that, that the Bradford Pear was, was the, uh, the tree of West Hollywood. Is it really? Uh huh they're everywhere on all the streets there. That's funny that you knew about the cum tree. Everybody knows about the cum tree. No, Who everyone does not know about the cum tree. Really? I used, and I learned about the cum tree uh, the old-fashioned way. Just you smelled it. Smelling. I was like, why am I smelling jizz here in West Hollywood? I don't know why. Oh, man. The Bradford pear. Well, I appreciate you coming uh, on my show. It's lovely to get to talk to you. And thank you for uh, sharing your story. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um... 
I think right now I'm going to go and get that domain for mensbutts.com. Okay. And I'm going to go buy a breadfruit tree. What a great, mature interview. My uh, thanks to Rock for coming by. A lot of you right now are probably wondering, hey, is there a huge, wooden, circumcised penis in between Carl and Daniel? Yeah, there is. And let me tell you the story of this big wooden dick. Okay? Weighs about a buck fifty. It was given to me in season one of Tosh.0. A fan found out where we shot the show and came to our offices. We didn't have security back then. Walked right in and was like, I'm looking for Daniel. And then somebody in my office goes, oh, his office is right there. Just in he came with this huge wooden dick. And I was a little upset that he breached our zero security fortress, but I took it. And over the years, it's appeared in dozens and dozens of bits in the background or whatever. But when I got home today, I, I said, Carly, I just interviewed the best guy. And guess what? He's going to want our wooden penis stool. I, I didn't want to get rid of it until I found the perfect home for it. And I think Rock is the one. So I, I hope you enjoy it uh, as a token of my appreciation for you being on the show. Uh, okay, now it's time for the big announcement. Remember last week, Carl, I said that I was going to announce what new casino I would be performing at in Vegas, my new residency. All right, Eddie, uh, give me a drum roll. No, 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 a, a fancier drum roll. Okay, now let it escalate. Oh, man, I will be at the Cosmopolitan. That's right. I'm staying in the MGM family. I will be performing at the Chelsea Theater there. Also this week, tons of uh, other shows are going on sale. I'm going to be in uh, Sacramento and Fresno. You know about the Dolby. I got some stuff coming up in Kentucky, Indianapolis, Battle Creek, Michigan. What the fuck am I doing there? Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing there. Firekeepers Casino. And in Detroit and Columbus, this all goes on sale this week. Look for ticket information and my tour dates on mensbutts.com. I believe that's my website now. That all goes on sale this week, Carl. What else do we have? Boyswearpink.com. Check out my charitable clothing line. The goat comes out fucking sometime. Now, uh, it's time for your favorite part of the show. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you don't, if you're one of those people that just hates children, well, then to hell with you because these are my son's bedtime stories that he told me when he was three years old. See you next week. Once upon a time, somebody named Trapton had a brutal. He would, he so he did what, and he bullets in, in this and the soul, and he, and he is so, he cleaned it up the mess in his house. But one evening, he, he so saw a butt. One butt had missed it, and the soul low and quiet. But he didn't know where it is. But somebody put it, who was serious, and came out of the drowned. It was a zombie. Jill would want zombies a real, and the zombie took his butt. Aiden, the end. I, I honestly don't think I understood anything in that story. There was a zombie. What else was there? What was the guy's? What was the guy's name? I don't remember either. Oh, all right. Show. Toss show for show.